a warm and sunny morning, everyone. Um, it's a good thing that the sun is out because like coming from a temperate country like the Philippines, uh, the weather yesterday was quite unbearable. Um, <laughs> so um, the title of the paper is A Sudden Shift and what uh, it's subtitled as what prompts increased local government response or increased local government response in to the climate change challenge in the Philippines. And this is actually a follow-up study of what I conducted in 2007, which was entitled um, it's just a buzzword from above, climate change and local government indifference in the Philippines, which was actually presented in the Development Studies Association conference in the UK sometime in September 2008. So uh, the paper is structured this way. Uh, I'd like to do some introductory remarks and look into local development planning in the Philippines, uh, move into discussing the results of the study over the two, uh, two period two periods, and then ask the questions, did things change? And if they, they did, why? And offer some concluding remarks at the end. So I'd like to start off with at least four statements. Statement one is from the UN Secretary General, when he said that we must connect the dots between climate change, water scarcity, energy shortages, global health, and so on, and that solutions to one problem must be solutions for all. And then statement two is about my president's pronouncement, the president of my country's pronouncement, that he's, he was saying that they have plans and strategies, we have plans and strategies to adapt to climate change, but we have to remember that the real challenge still awaits us, the fact that these plans still have to be implemented through consolidated efforts by local government units. Statement three is what we found in the 2007 study, and the mayor said, it's just a buzzword from above, nobody here cares about it. Statement four, the same mayor in the 2011 study said, climate change needs to be incorporated into the development agenda. Now, the, what sorts of questions does this paper like to answer? First, we would like to answer, why is, it's, is, is it that there seems to be a disconnect between commitments at the international and national levels and local government awareness or local government response? And second would be, if you look at the statements three and four, there's a change in articulation. So why the change in local government articulation is so short a time? And finally ask the question, what are the implications of this on governance structures of climate change and local government response? So the locale of the study is uh, Bohol, which is actually located uh, here. Um, in this area, it's an island province in the center. You have three major islands group. This is island groups. This is the Luzon and the Orange and the southern part with the uh, Mindanao. And this is the island group in the Visayas, uh, which practically is in, in the middle range of almost everything when you talk about combined risk in climate disasters. When you talk about combined risk in ge geophysical disasters and also when you talk about poverty con condition. Uh, but I chose Bohol as a study because of uh, the fact that the primary drivers of the economy of the province are essentially agriculture and tourism. So uh, which two things which are practically very vulnerable to uh, climate change impacts. Um, I'd like to proceed into discussing how do we look at the local development planning in the Philippines. So this is how local development plans are being made. You have a long, uh, sh shall we say, a strategic plan for three to nine years, which is a, what we, they, we refer to as a comprehensive development plan. You have a term plan. When you say a term plan, uh, because elec uh, elections are held every three years, so that CDP or the strategic plan is uh, created into what we refer to as a, an executive legislative agenda done within the term of the elected uh, uh, local leaders. And that is broken down into annual investments plan, uh, plans no, of one year, of year of an, on a yearly basis. In terms of structure of local planning, these are two, uh, I, there are two areas here. There's a political component and a technical component. So you have here all the elected uh, uh, officers serving three years. And you also have the technical component here with, with uh, department heads, LPDOs, NGAs, which are essentially uh, non-political non and are tenure-based. 
So most often than that, this provides the meat of this or the substance, but this defines actually the priorities. So you have some kind of a disconnect there because the ones that are defining priorities are the ones that are not actually technically competent uh, to define those priorities, but are getting essentially the inputs from those that are technically competent. Now, some notes here. So the political or the elected officials are the ones that participate, but the political stakeholders define the direction. Another interesting note here is that plans are dependent on the prioritization ethic of elected leaders who decide on the annual investment plan. So even if you have a CDP or a comprehensive development plan, a strategic plan for a long term period of time, the basis of the local government budget is actually decided on by the political leaders. And then you have essentially the development plans are of long term in nature. If you look at the comprehensive development plan, for example, that's six to nine years or the term plan, but then you have officials which are actually of long, short term horizon, which means to say that they're just after of winning probably the next local elections. So they would probably prioritize those things which would create the greatest media mileage on, or the greatest impact on the part of the people that they are, uh, that are, we will be electing them in the next round of elections. And then, um, you know that from several studies on the politics in the country, elections are held every three years and poverty is prevalent and patronage politics is rampant, more particularly in the context of the case study. So how do I locate the argument? Uh, I would just like to reinforce that we know that the local is an important site. It has been continuously re-emphasized yesterday that there is a need to trickle down that kind of knowledge, scientific as it may be, to the local level. There have been arguments that said that the communities that have to be empowered so that they can actively contribute to the vulnerability assessment. And uh, echoing also Land Pritchett's lecture in the first uh, on the annual lecture two days back, it was saying actually that you have to define the problem and not have one solution to fit all types of problems. And then there's a, always a recognition that the climate change needs to be incorporated into development planning at all scales, levels, and sectors, the local included. So the methods are, we reviewed the development plans in 2011 and then in 2007, three years prior to that, we did a survey of perceptions and knowledge using a, uh, a modified uh, questionnaire taken off from knowledge and perception surveys on climate change. And we did key informant interviews of local ch chief executives, we call them as mayors no? in both periods. Okay, so what are the results for the review of the local development plans? So 60% of local development plans were reviewed for the total province of 49 municipalities. And then you have, uh, uh, you have these findings. So in 2007, no single plan mentioned climate change issues. Nothing about uh, disaster reduction or mitigation and adaptation. But then there are environmental projects that are identified, but not related necessarily to climate change concerns, or they are not intentionally related. Uh, like solid waste management, which is a compliance to law, national law, and then you also have tree planting and so on. And then mitigation and adaptation is not in the lexicon. For 2011, two plans mentioned climate change. So we kind of ask why. And then 12 plans contains programs, plans, projects contain uh, con regarding concerns on this disaster risk reduction, which could be probably the closest that people can get to associate themselves with climate change. And then you have mitigation and adaptation starting, not still in the lexicon of uh, the planning exercise. Okay. So for the survey of the local leaders that are planning, we, are, we have seen that for both years, knowledge is sufficient at the general le level, wanting at a specific level. So they say that there's such a thing as a global warming, but they don't know what global warming is all about. And then perception regarding the gravity of the problem is high, but views on the problem are not as urgent as poverty. So you have a question here of prioritization. And then there is insufficient knowledge as to how climate change is to be addressed at the local level. So there could be, the reason probably why there is a lack of response is a lack of information as how to respond. So did we get the questions right? Um, in 2011, for example, only 40% of the plan has actually assessed the risk and vulnerabilities in specific areas to climate change. 
And local level leaders have a very basic understanding of the change issue, climate change issue. And though urgency of climate change is felt, there's a far serious problem that they say than climate change. And then they say that's poverty. Okay? So, but we have to say that local stakeholders are indifferent. But the translation to action is, is constrained by the lack of information and an understanding of the means by which this can be addressed. But in a span of three years, however, you would like to, we would ask, why is it that climate change has started to enter into the local development agenda, as has, what has been shown in the review of lo local development plans? We can have uh, ex explanation one, and that could be election effect. Because between 2000 and 2011, one election occurred. So with every change of leaders, there could be a change also in uh, priorities. However, uh, we can classify this into these things, like we can have same leaders, same priorities, and so on. But we found out reviewing the leaders and the plans that most of these are actually here. Same leaders, same priorities. New leaders, same priorities. Less of new priorities, even with new leaders. The next is, could it be that there's a change in awareness of local planners? But then, if you look at this, for example, these are almost the same between two periods, not even statistically significant. So, but you can have somehow a kind of an increase in the perceived gravity of the problem and a little bit on prioritization. Explanation three could be recent events affecting lives of people and property. Like for example, this is what happened to uh, 2009 and 2010 in the Philippines for floods, floods tropical cyclo cyclones and droughts. But then you can see that during this two year period when which the plans are also being formulated, there's a decrease, for example, in floods, tropical cyclones and droughts. So what is, where does it leave us? So we say that only 6% mention climate change. 100% of those that mention climate change are coastal municipalities. 41% mention disasters and calamities, so the language is actually couched within disasters and calamities. And then 100% of those municipalities which plans mention disasters and calamities were recipients of a project that seeks to integrate disaster risk reduction to local development plans. So what does it tell us? Well, you probably have what you call as a top-down incorporation to local development planning of the climate change agenda, or a downward pressure. We, in national governments, due to treaty signed, legislations, paths, or programs supplemented, they're actually imposing on local governments to incorporate the climate change agenda into the local development plans. So what, if you look at the, our case, between the 2007 and 2011, the two periods where we are conducting the study, the, the Republic of the Philippines legislature passed RA 10121, which is the Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act, which compels local government units to implement comprehensive, coherent, integrated, efficient, and responsive disaster risk reduction programs. Now, in the case study that we have, Bohol, it is also a pilot province for the project entitled Integrating Disaster Risk Reduction and Climate Change Adaptation in Local Planning and Decision-Making Processes. And the 12 municipalities that mentions climate change and disaster risk reduction are all recipients of this project. So, we say the change in leadership did not have a significant effect. Knowledge of local planners hardly changed. Recent events may have had an impact, but not really that significant. And there's more reason to conclude that incorporation is a result of a top-down pressure than any other else. So, there's the same implication as changing story in the 2007 and in the 2011 study. There's still a challenge of information. Questions like how should public information on climate change be structured? How is information reaching at the local level with the current national commitments? There's a challenge of prioritization, like how should climate change place itself in the current challenge of eradicating poverty, especially in the context of uh, local government units wherein politicians actually are serving only three-year terms with climate change as an agenda on a long-term basis. And what is a viable option for local responses in a situation of insufficient development funds? So you always have the case that the budget is not enough. And then you would require to allocate those, the, amounts, the amounts of money that you have into specific concerns as health, education, and so on and so forth. And finally, there's a challenge of ownership. 
So how will local stakeholders, for example, own a concept that they did not participate in how the questions and solutions are structured? Are local governments, for example, informed on what the commitments of their national governments are? How should this concept be felt and owned by people, for example, struggling for daily survival? So, in the end, uh, I would just like to say that the paper actually resonates um, the same kind of uh, analysis that has been made by LASCO uh, et al. in uh, the review of national development plans. He was saying there that the review, in, in the review of national development plans in the country, national priorities are biased towards more pri pressing concerns, which is actually the challenge of prioritization, which I was talking about in the local context. And the same study also said that there's a, uh, there's a prevalent lack of information on how climate change issues are to be addressed, at the national, even at the national level, which is actually the same challenge of information that I was talking about in the local context. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.